Hey, this is Russ. I have a bike to show you. Now, I didn't say a new bike. It's a bike to show you. And here's why I say it's not technically a new bike. Take a look at this bike. <laughs> you guys recognize this one? Yeah, this is the Electric XP 3.0. Now, the reason I didn't say it was a new bike is because technically it's not really that new. Yeah, it's been around for a while. I'm trying to keep my shadow out of it here. Yeah, so, but it's new to me. So I figure it's new to you now too. <laughs> so uh, what are we looking at here? Well, recently I went out to uh, Phoenix, Arizona to visit the uh, people at Electric and uh, had a chance to ride a number of their bikes. And so uh, we were kind of talking about what bike is best suited for me to show on the Russ is Right channel and review. Well, this one came up right away, all right? Uh, because we kind of figured, well, this is kind of the bike that started electric out in the first place. And it is one of the most popular e-bikes on the market today. Yeah, electric actually is the number one e-bike company in the United States as of last year. And they have full intention to continue doing that in years to come. So uh, I said, yeah, the XP makes sense to show because uh, it hits a price point that people can go to and start out with e-biking. And also it's good for those who, uh, you know, are experienced too, but want something that's a little different. Now this is a folding style bike and I'll try to show you how it folds a little bit later. I won't do it now. I, I, I need to put it on a tripod on this camera to do that. So I'm gonna do that a little later, but you'll see here, there's uh, folding points here. So right over here, if you undo this, this will fold in half, okay? And up on the top here, this will fold too. So you push this button here, pull that out, this whole top section will fold down. So it becomes uh, an easy way to transport the bike, even if you don't have a rear rack on your car. Um, if you have an SUV, something like that, you can put that in there. All right, let me show you how we fold the bike. It's actually very simple to do. There's a control over here. All we have to do is push this up and pull down. That'll bring this one down here, okay? Then there's another section right here. You notice there's right over here, you pull that out. You can then just bend this in half. And there you go. The bike is ready to go. Yeah, it's pretty easy. Let me take the kickstand off here. I think it'll make it easier to uh, stand by itself. There it goes. Pretty simple, huh? Put it back together real easy. All you have to do is lift it up, slide this out here, clip this in place. Again, pull that out, slide that in. Lift this up, lock it in place, put down the kickstand, and you're ready to go. Can't be any easier than that. Some people have been known to put it in a 50 gallon uh, container. You know, you go to like Home Depot, one of those places, buy one of those containers, fold it in half, stick it in there, and slide it into the car. <laughs> yeah, so it's easy to do. And then you might notice too that the rear rack is actually part of the bike, and because it's actually part of the frame, it has 150 pound capacity. That's a lot. <laughs> Most of these rear racks will only hold 50, but it has 150 pound capacity, yeah. So what do I think of this bike? Well, we're gonna take it for a ride and see what, what uh, it, it does. I've already ridden about nine miles on it. And uh, I will tell you that um, it performs very well. It is a bike that will do 20 miles per hour if you pedal and or throttle okay because there's a half twist throttle on top here right here I put an accessory here I put a, uh, a uh, 3d printed thumb throttle as I always typically do but typically this is just a standard half twist throttle and if you uh, if you pedal it you can go as far as uh, 28 miles per hour so yeah so it will do class 3 if you like okay now, as far as what's on top here, 
let's kind of start from stop uh, from top i've actually changed the bike a little bit as i usually do i added a side view mirror as i always do i added my typical bell okay that's not come with the bell i think it really should come with a bell something electric could kind of think about but i put my el cheapo bell it cost me like a dollar 73 or something like that um, then you have your controls here which turns on and off the bike and of course your pedal assist levels up and down are here and then uh, you have the standard SIS shifter from Shimano. This is a seven speed shifter. And that of course corresponds to the derailleur, which is a Shimano Turney derailleur, okay? So uh, this is a um, 20 inch by three inch fat tire. So it's not quite as wide as the typical four inch tires, but that makes it a little bit more nimble, which is kind of nice and, uh, um, and, the, and the like. So, yeah, I'm going to pull out my phone here. I put a whole bunch of notes on there. I want to make sure I don't miss anything. So let me uh, pop that open here. So I'm just going to read you some of the things that I found about the bike. Now, the regular price of this bike is $1,474. I have the extended range version here. Okay, now you can get this as uh, an extended range, which means it's, it's got a little bit bigger battery, or you can get this as a standard uh, range bike and it costs a little bit less but the 1474 on sale is 11.99 and if you get the other version which is the standard battery it's only 999 dollars so obviously it it fits in the sub 1000 dollar categories and currently they actually give you some free uh, items too if you order now they have a free front and rear baskets okay so there's a front basket that'll attach right over here then you can get the uh, the large rear basket too. That comes with it now because it's on sale with these freebies. And you get a phone mount and also a bottle shaped lock um, that looks like a, looks like a bottle, I guess. And that uh, all that stuff is is extra stuff that comes for free. All right. As far as the size is concerned, size and guide, the bike unfolded is 67 by 25 by 47 high. Stand standover height is. 18.5 now you might notice that this is a step through version they have a step over version and a step through version i like the step through it's a lot easier to get on and off the bike yeah um, payload capacity is a maximum of 330 pounds that's including any weight that you put on the rear rack and of course the uh, person themselves uh, seat to ground height is from 30 inches to 40 inches all right so is this giving me the full extension? Um, it's close, not quite. I'm five foot 10 and uh, I like a full extension on my pedaling, but uh, not everyone does that. Handlebar width is about 25 inches. Okay, let's cross that way. And uh, handlebar, our handlebar reach is uh, 18.5 to 20 inches. There, there is an adjustability here. You might notice there, if you unlock that, you can move that handlebar higher or lower. I have it a little bit higher for me because I have it all the way up there. Now, basically, uh, you have pedal assists of five levels, okay? It can be set up as a class one, two, or three e-bike, according to them. It is a 500 watt hub motor that peaks out at 1,000 watts, okay? And uh, that gives you a 55 Newton meter of torque and it has a 20 amp controller. All right, so how is it gonna go over the hill? Um, we'll see, we'll see how that goes over the hill. Um, it should get over the hill okay. I'm sure it won't be the fastest bike that gets over the hill, but it should be sufficient. Uh, and again, the battery comes either as a standard or a long range battery. These are 48 volt lithium ion batteries that are UL certified to uh, UL 2271 to power the ride. And uh, the entire bike actually is uh, UL2849 uh, certified as well. So yeah, it's good safety involved here, okay? Brakes have been upgraded to um, 180 millimeter uh, rotors. Let me get to this side here. So your rotors are 180 millimeter rotors. These are hydraulic brakes. They don't seem to have a label of who manufactures it, but uh, it does stop very well. No problem with that. And uh, <laughs> you do have front headlight, of course, and you do have rear tail lights in the back here too. 
and the fenders are included and they are metal fenders now metal fenders look really cool it's nice and shiny but uh, any little thing that goes by it <laughs> if you have a little pebble you're gonna hear it go bing all right so uh, that is uh, that is a drawback of metal fenders but a lot of people like the metal fenders you kind of feel that uh, it gives them a little bit more uh, feel like they've got something something but personally I, I, I personally prefer the, uh, the plastic fenders myself okay so their uh, pedal assist is a wattage regulation pedal assist they call it a pedal assist wattage regulator uh, for the programming and that gives you a certain feel as you're riding but it is a cadence sensor bike all right so that will uh, that will be something you should know and uh, that's pretty typical you have a 11 by 28 tooth um, uh, freewheel in the back not really quite sure how big the, uh, the chain ring is back there in the front there uh, total weight of the bike is 64 pounds including the seven pound battery that's installed now the battery is installed inside the frame here okay now the interesting thing is with this is that um, you have to have the the uh, let me see if I can see it from this angle here now well, maybe I don't know if you can see that but you have to have your key inside there in order to ride the bike now a lot of people kind of felt like well isn't that gonna like fall out no it won't uh, once you turn it on uh, that key locks in place and it does not fall out unless you want it to come out all right you'd have to turn it there's two sections you turn it once it locks the battery inside the bike so if you want to take the key away nobody can open up and take the battery because it's locked inside there and then the second position gives you the ability to turn the power on to the uh, to the bike so yeah it's kind of a good thing I've had bikes before that do that so yeah something you just need to be aware of you have to have one key in there all the time in order to ride the bike it's going to turn the bike on here again all you do is you push the button here hold that this will turn on now you might notice this is a black and white display that's actually good right I know people sometimes say well we like the color display I'm telling you, I've, I've seen this display on other bikes before because obviously electric doesn't manufacture a display screen. They buy it from somebody else. But uh, it's so good that you can see it in bright sunlight all the time. There's never been an issue for any, uh, any bike or scooter that I've had that had this display screen. So I kind of like it. This energy bar is basically your, your uh, battery level. You got your speed speedometer here speed and uh, miles per hour or whichever settings you set it for kilometers um, PAS is your pedal assist levels it's zero through five zero does not allow the uh, the thumb throttle or in this case uh, my thumb throttle but typically it's a half twist throttle does not work at zero so it's a safety and then uh, the bottom is uh, kind of varies so depending on how you hit this uh, power button here it'll go from odometer to trip meters to uh, voltage to current and the time that it's been running since you turned the power on and of course we just turned it on again so it's been one minute and 13 seconds there so uh, and I've ridden this bike nine miles since I've uh, started out with the bike okay all right so the seat <laughs> not the greatest um, typical uh, for me I would probably change it out it's a little narrow for me I, I like a wider seat and uh, it does have some cushiness to it but it's kind of rubbery um, I would change it out personally but again you could do what you like saddles are probably the first thing most people will end up changing out anyways if they do any type of change out chain ring is actually um, set up so that there is um, protection in the front and back of the chain so the chain is not going anywhere and keeps your uh, your pants leg uh, nice and clean so yeah let's try this bike out let's take it out see how it goes all right let's go ahead and take this out and see how it goes as we usually do we'll go towards our typical hill test to see how it does over the hill but we got to get there I've always noticed too as I go towards the hill test here we go through this one area and it's fairly bumpy on this uh, road I think they really kind of need to fix the path a little bit because I know as I talk I usually sound like I'm 
wobbling a little bit because uh, I'm kind of bounced around. Now the front fork on this uh, bike is um, a suspension fork, okay? So it does take up some of the bounce that happens and uh, you can uh, turn that on or turn that off. If you, you have a, an ability to lock it out if you don't want it. I don't see why anyone would not want it, but you can turn it off. So on one side is, um, uh, you have a preload section there for how much of the bounce you want. And then the other side is, is to be able to have it happen or not have it happen. But uh, typically I leave my suspension on yeah, this is this is kind of bouncy here. <laughs> now you might hear too if in the background the uh, the front fender. I do notice as I'm hitting bumps, I hear a little pinging from the from the fender. I don't know if you noticed that or not. And I think that what that is is I think um, it's the uh, little metal bars that hold the fender in place. I think I need to put something there to kind of dampen it. I think it's the metal against the metal kind of makes that sound. So I'll find a way to dampen that a little bit. And maybe in the future we won't hear that as much. So yeah, I got to kind of tweak things a little bit sometimes. You know, it's, it's no real big deal. But, you know, sometimes the, the sound bothers people. So as we get towards this hill test, many of you guys know who've been watching the Russ is Right channel for a while. What we do is we get to this uh, area right by this uh, bridge and then we'll stop at that point and what we'll do is we'll throttle only to get up the hill and we'll look at our speedometer to see what kind of uh, speed we're getting over the hill. All right? now, based on its uh, torque setting, I don't expect this to be the fastest climber of the, of the hill, <laughs> but uh, I'm sure it will be fully capable of getting over the hill. That's the main thing. Now as I'm pedaling too, we have different pedal level assists here and um, so far I have not noticed much, if any, um, ghost pedaling uh, as I approach the 20 miles per hour ranges. Um, but I've been in um, gear seven most of the time as I've been pedaling around. Yeah, it's getting colder out here. Yeah, I have a, I have a long sleeve uh, sweatshirt on. I've got my full gloves on I notice that whenever I have the half gloves on and it's too cold you know once my finger gets cold I figure that's it I'm done <laughs> so full gloves today now you're gonna see a number of electric bike reviews from me yeah electric is sending me a whole bunch of bikes for review we're gonna try to finish these this year so um, I already have the electric XP trike in-house already so that's the next one that will be reviewed <laughs> Then I'm expecting the electric one to come in. This is the belt drive uh, model with the automatic transmission. That's gonna be kind of cool to check out. So stay tuned for that one. And then um, I think they're gonna plan to send me the two new bikes that we saw in Arizona when we all went out there for their uh, media day. All right, now we have some people in front of us here, so it's gonna be very hard for me to do this test with them there because I'll probably run into them if I do that so I think we will stop and wait here for a little bit I, I think it's gonna take them a long time all right let's go ahead and give this a try I have my pedal assist level set at five so that'll give me full ability to hit the throttle full blast and we'll see how far we go and how fast it gets there All right, when we get towards the hill, it's going to start to slow down. The question is, is how fast does it get over the hill? How far does it drop to? So we're over 20 miles an hour right now. And I think we're going to run into these people here. I'll hit the bell, let them know we're coming. And we are at 13, 12... I noted a 10.7 miles per hour going over the hill. That is not bad. Yeah, that is actually not bad. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I was expecting it to be a little bit lower, but 10.7 is very respectable for, uh, for this motor. Yeah, so yeah, good job, electric. Yeah. yeah, I don't think you would have any problems getting over hills with this thing. Yeah, the 3.0 version, as you know, uh, because the XP has been around for a while, 
it's in its third iteration, which means they've improved the bike little by little. And um, this is not the first time I've seen the electric XP. Uh, my first uh, viewing of it was when my friend, I call him Donut Jim because he was a donut vendor at one time. Um, donut Jim had, I believe he has the 2.0 version. And so it's now on the 3.0 version now. So they keep improving this thing. And the reason to keep having it is because, yeah, it's, it's a very popular e-bike. It's probably one of the most popular e-bikes that's out there. So um, yeah, here's the interesting thing with electric. If you decide to get an electric bike, they are very nice people to work with. Uh, I got to meet everybody out there. I saw everyone from uh, people who answer the phones, customer service people, uh, bike technicians, uh, warehouse people. Yeah, saw them all out there. So thank you to Electric for inviting me to get out uh, to visit them. Uh, a number of the other YouTubers uh, who also uh, have electric bikes for review uh, was out there as well. I've met a number of uh, um, YouTubers out there, so that was a good thing in addition to the, uh, the visit to see electric. But yeah, have full confidence that uh, they, they are a strong company. Okay. Like I mentioned too, they are currently the number one selling e-bike company in the United States right now. They intend to keep that too. <laughs> All right, now I'm gonna pick us up back again when we uh, get to the forest preserve because it gets a little noisy out here. Talk to you guys in a moment. All right, I'm back. Sometimes it's a little noisy by that uh, intersection, so I usually cut us off and start us back up. Yeah, a lot of leaves are down. It is cold out here in the Chicago area. You notice uh, we've already got the change of uh, leaves going on already. So uh, I hope I can get to all the bike reviews before <laughs> it becomes difficult to do so. Let me tell you about the putting this bike together, okay? They claim no tools required. Well, that is an accurate claim. You don't need any tools because you really don't build the bike. It's already built for you, yeah. All you have to do is take out, take out all of the packing material. So I timed myself. It took me only eight minutes to get this bike ready to go, yeah. Now, you do have to charge the battery, <laughs> all right? So that takes time. And so I, uh, I put it in the charger and charged it up. But as far as uh, building the bike, no, you're really not building the bike at all. All you have to do is you have to put the handlebar in the, uh, the handlebar tube down here. And then you got to put, uh, take the saddle off, uh, take the uh, packing material off of it and then put the saddle back on the, uh, the, sa uh, the seat tube. That's it. <laughs> It's really easy to put together. I, I've never had a bike come together in only eight minutes from taking it out of the box. That's incredible, yeah. Now what about their other products? Well, I actually had the uh, XP trike as well. It took a little longer because it's a bigger and heavier uh, machine. Uh, but again, yeah, you don't have to build it. It's actually built. You just have to take it out of the box and take out all of the uh, packing material around everything. They pack it really well. You know, it's got a lot of styrofoam, uh, uh, wrapped styrofoam type things around all of the, the tubes and everything like that. You gotta take all that stuff off. It's taped together with masking tape. And then the rest of it is, of course, zip ties. That's it. So all you need is something to take the zip ties off. <laughs> so that rattling that you hear, I, I took a look at it during the break while I was waiting. Yeah, it is the, uh, it is the fender bouncing against the metal rods that hold the fender in place. So I think all I have to do is just put something between the, uh, the fender and that metal rod and that'll dampen it and you'll never hear it again. <laughs> That's a little tweak, okay, but you know, something that you gotta do. All right, we're going up a little hill here. What are we doing? 12.8 miles an hour going up this hill on the throttle. Let's pedal. Yeah, pedaling is really easy on this on this bike. I, I don't have any problems at all pedaling it. So yeah, it's a nice ride. 
I know a number of people who have uh, various versions of the XP, whether it's the 1.0 or the 2.0 or the 3.0 version. So like I said, it's, it's, it's a new bike to me, but it's not a new bike. It's, uh, it's been around and it'll probably continue too. I don't see, um, see them not wanting to continue this, this XP model. You know, in time, maybe you'll have a 4.0 version or a 5.0 version, but um, it's, a, it's a really top seller for them. So there's no reason to get rid of it. And I kind of like these uh, updates that uh, the bike manufacturers do to the bikes because that tells me that the bike was good enough to, to do an update to it, right? Because usually if a bike is not good, they don't do an update, they just get rid of the model. <laughs> they did not get rid of the XP model. It's, it's up to 3.0 now. They just keep improving it little by little. Yeah, rides really nice. I'm gonna lower my pedal assist here to level three. We're going down a hill a little bit here, so uh, the trail speed is 15 miles per hour, but it's really easy to pass 15 miles an hour. Uh, I'm doing 18 right now, but even if I don't even pedal, you can see, you know, unless I'm riding the brake as you're going down a hill, um, let's ride the brake a little bit here, uh, you can pass 15 miles an hour pretty easy. Yeah, I like it. I think it's a good value. So what about the standard versus the extended range? Well, I'm gonna tell you, if you can afford the extended range version, get the extended range version. It gives you, I think, about 15 miles more if you're on pedal assist level one, something like that. So it just gives you a little bit more to, to go farther or if you're going somewhere and you, you, you know, you're worried that uh, you may not have enough uh, battery to get back, that'll give you some extra battery to get back home, yeah. But if, you know, if, if it's tight in, in terms of the money, $9.99 is not a bad price to get into an e-bike. $11.99 if you're getting the uh, extended range version, which is what this one is. The bikes are identical, it's just the battery, okay? How big the battery is, that's all. All right, let's move our pedal assist a little bit higher because we're going up a little bit of an incline there. And then I could lower it again. Kind of goes up and down over here. Yeah, it's fun. You know, I have different types of bikes, obviously. I have some very powerful bikes. I have some very fancy bikes, but um, sometimes it's not about all that. It's just the fun of getting out and riding. And uh, this bike will give that to you. If you're looking for a relatively inexpensive e-bike to start out with, it's very hard to beat this XP. Pass through here. People always say, why don't you hit them with the bell? You know, sometimes it's not worth it. You know, they're so far over to the one side. As long as I'm all the way on the other side, sometimes I've seen uh, when you hit people with the bell, they kind of get upset that you hit them with the bell. So. Now in that case, you have to hit them with the bell, make sure. <laughs> Hey, there's times you could do it, sometimes you don't have to do it. It really uh, depends. So yeah, here's my final thoughts on, on this bike, okay? I think it does an excellent job for the money. It's very hard to beat. So, I think it's very hard to beat. $9.99, $11.99, how could you beat it? So yeah, good job, Electric. I appreciate everything that you guys did for us, uh, getting us out to Arizona to visit with you and also to uh, get introduced to the brand. I appreciate all the e-bikes you've been sending to me. Oh, I just hope I could do it justice. <laughs> all right, folks. Yeah, high recommendation for uh, entry-level bike that can continue on for longer than just entry-level. Hey, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. If you're interested in buying one of these bikes, please use the affiliate link that I have in the description below. Helps out our channel if you do that. I'll talk to you guys next time.